Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and today I will be talking about the basic accounting equation balance sheet and also income statement uh, because you can always see this appear in the HKDSE every single year and then sometimes uh, in part one of paper one so basically the MC part they will give you a uh, different equations and they will ask you which one is the correct accounting equation and firstly I will begin with the accounting equation first because the accounting equation actually also applies on uh, uh, balance sheet right but I'll explain more later so over here for accounting equation the most basic accounting equation is actually assets equals to capital plus liabilities but then in textbooks they usually just use the word capital but actually it's referring to closing capital and later on I'll explain uh, how do you obtain closing capital uh, by using the balance sheet but then from this equation we can we can also get this equation so assets equals to opening capital plus revenue minus expenses minus drawings plus liabilities so this part is actually the closing capital this part is actually this part right but then actually we can also create one more equation from here for people who are studying economics, you should know that revenue minus expenses uh, is the profit. But then, yes, so we can also call this profit. Okay, so the last equation that we can have is assets minus liabilities equals to capital. But of course, in the uh, they always they always like to. Uh, change the subject for example this time maybe it's assets honestly they can even make oh assets minus capital equals to liabilities right and that is also still a correct accounting equation because all they're doing is just moving uh, different uh, variables to the other side so make sure the first thing you do is write down the most basic equation first and then try to uh, move move those variables around and see which one is the correct fair uh, correct equation so over here uh, let me talk about uh, income statement first okay so for income statement right, usually in the ASC they will ask you questions like this right so over here uh, in this question this is uh, a DAC past paper the training 21 DAC past paper paper one so in question five, they they give they gave you some information about Mr. Wong's uh, company, and they are asking you to prepare an income statement for the month ended, thirtieth of April, twenty twenty one. Well, usually they ask you to uh, prepare an income statement for the yearly ended, but then sorry for the year ended, but then actually we can we can still construct an income statement uh, for the month ended. So over here, uh, I mean, as you can see, the name the name is different, right? Over here, they use a statement of comprehensive income for the year ended, blah blah. blah. But then over here, they use what income statement for the month ended, blah blah. blah. Uh, my suggestion is to follow whatever is given in your question. So over here, if they t if they tell you to prepare an income statement for the year only for the month ended, blah, blah blah, then just write oh, uh, then just copy the same copy whatever it's here and then paste it over here. But then let's say right now they ask you to prepare an income statement, right for the month ended, blah blah. blah. Sorry, uh, if, if they're asking you to prepare the statement of comprehensive income for the year ended, blah blah, blah or for the month ended, blah blah. blah then just copy whatever is in the question and paste it over here well in this question they did not give us the company's name but then we know that Mr. Wong is the owner so in in these cases then we will just write Mr. Wong over here 
So then we start with cells, right? Over here they also gave us cells. So we will put cells and then 103500. So we generally use two dollar sign. And it is also something that I suggest you to use because for some people they will have three dollar sign but then it's not needed. Okay, in DSE two dollar sign is enough. So over here we have sales less returns inwards. Right, so we just put sales over here and then returns inwards over here and then over here, okay, so what is this number? Right, this number is actually called net sales. Okay, so basically the final sales. So it's basically sales minus returns inwards. And then for and after that we use net sales, we have to minus the cost of goods sold to calculate the net profit. So for cost of goods sold, what's in it? Well, opening inventory, purchases, carriage inwards. Uh, and after that we also have to minus returns outwards and closing inventory to calculate the cost of goods sold, which is this. Okay, so after you input, after you uh, write down all the numbers given, then you can try to find the uh, cost of goods sold over here, and then we use net sales minus cost of goods sold. Okay, net sales minus cost of goods sold, and then we can get the gross profit. Right, so over here less, less means minus. Okay. So after we obtain the gross profit, these are what uh, we call the additional income. Okay, additional income. So we we actually treat uh this kind of received rental income and interest income as additional income. So and we usually put it after the gross profit. Okay, so just follow whatever is in this uh format. And then after you add up all the additional income with the gross profit then this will be your then this will be the amount of the amount of um, profit after adding up the additional income and then over here these are the expenses so just remember this right uh, gross profit does not care about expenses or does not cover the expenses but then for net profit Okay, net profit covers expenses as well. So after you, you after you add up the additional income, then you have to minus the expenses. So these are the examples. Okay, these are the common uh, expenses uh, that are given in DSU. But usually, as you can see from here, they only give you a few uh, a few accounts to write. So don't worry too much. Right, you can usually finish this in like ten minutes or even less. See, they only give you one, two, three, four. They only give you six accounts, so it's it's much quicker and much uh, shorter than this. So don't worry if it's if it's short in the SC. So after you do this, uh, after you minus all of these all of these expenses, then you'll be able to obtain net profit, which is this number. And then remember to always underline it. And we're in DSE, right? It's not a must that they ask you to calculate the net profit, right? In some cases, there can be a net loss as well. So, if your number is negative, then put a bracket next to it. Okay, put a bracket next to it and underline it. And over here, instead of writing net profit, you have to write net loss. Because right now it is a negative number, and you're actually losing money. Uh, next I'll talk about the balance sheet. So for balance sheet, it can also be called uh, as the statement of financial position, right? As that blah blah. Well, you may ask me, how can you effectively distinguish between a balance sheet and income statement? For me, I also had this problem of uh, mixing uh, these two different. I mean, these two are. Uh, uh, financial statements up but then it's actually very easy to differentiate them well for balance sheet we use asset but then for income statement we use for the blah blah and the blah blah okay this is the most effective way to distinguish them 
So over here, as you can see, right, we we have we 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 also use, we also use two sign only, okay, and then we always begin with non-current assets, right. So what are non-current assets? Well, non-current assets are basically the assets that are. that are over one year, for example, land and buildings. For these assets, right, you cannot really, like how do I say this, like, uh, usually you own them for more than a year. Or you can say that these are actually uh, assets that are worth a lot of money. Then these, we generally call it the non-current assets. Or even for motor vehicles, plants, machinery, right? these are considered as non-current assets and a benefit for current assets is basically assets that you own for less than uh, one year for example closing inventory accounts receivable rental deposits loan to blah blah, blah bank cash okay these are considered as current assets so same thing over here you write down all the numbers and you add them up and you can get the total non-current assets and over here we have the total uh, current assets and after here we use less so it basically means minus again we minus so we use total assets minus current liabilities so uh, minus total liabilities so we're actually using this this equation uh, for balance sheet but of course if you ask me if you can express your balance sheet like this if that's okay, yes, it's totally fine. But then for me, I prefer to do it like this. So I express the balance sheet as total assets minus total liabilities minus total capital. Okay, so less current. Okay, so we begin the balance sheet with non current assets. But then later on, we always begin uh, the accounts with current blah blah. So current liabilities. And then we put accounts payable, short term loan, bank overdraft, blah blah. And then we put this is the total current liabilities. And then we have non current liabilities. So we put it over here as well. But to be honest, I'm not sure what's wrong with this PDF, but then uh, it should be over here, okay? This should be where you put down the total non current assets, the total current, total current assets over here. So basically, horizontal to this. Okay, I'm not sure why it's it's down here, but it should be up here. Okay. So after you minus the total as uh total assets with the total liabilities, then the amount of money you have left, I mean, or the number over there, it should be equal to total capital. Right, and then over here we have to write oh finance by dot dot and then oh capital underline remember we have to underline these accounts so current assets non-current assets we have to underline them and then here we begin with balance as at blah blah, blah. well usually for example in this year's uh, the SE, the 2021 paper one question uh 5b they ask you to prepare an income statement for the year ended blah blah, blah. and over here they actually gave you the opening capital so here, capital, 1st of January 2019. This is the closing, oh, so this is the opening capital. So what we have to do is very simple. Then we simply write balance as at 1st of January 2019. So we have to transform this into the form of this, okay? So then we put the opening capital here, and then we have net profit, and then we have assets introduced, and then we have to minus drawings, less again, so minus drawings, and then you're able to get, then you're able to get this, which is the closing capital. Well, now, I'm not sure if you find this familiar. Okay, oh, oops. Over here, right? This is basically okay. This is closing capital. And if you look back at this equation over here, we're basically doing the same thing. We use opening capital plus net profit minus drawings plus liabilities. We're over here, same thing. Opening capital 
plus net, uh, net profit minus showings. Okay, but then if there are no assets introduced, then there's no need to write this account. You can just ignore this if it's not given. Okay. So it's basically saying, remember, make sure you write balance as blah, blah, blah. You cannot write opening capital here. Okay, same for here. You have to write inventory instead of closing inventory. So that's it for this question. Sorry, that's it for this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me and make sure you subscribe and share this video with your friends or uh, other students who are in need. And if you want to hire me as a tutor, feel free to contact me as well on Instagram, on WhatsApp. And you can also go to my website for more information as I also uh, made some math tutorial videos there. So I hope you guys like this video and goodbye.